still in college. In college, the government didn't know if I was really a security risk or not. They just couldn't decide. And I did complain at the time. So they did decide to put a mail check on me. And every day, mail started arriving later and later. Opened envelopes, corners, torn, never properly glued back together. Well, I was sort of an activist back then. So I decided to fight fire with fire, and uh, I decided to write letters to the very man who was reading my mail. And I would address it to myself. But inside, it would be something like this. Dear sir, I'm not that different from you. All men are brothers. Tomorrow, instead of reading my mail in the dark, dusty hall, why not bring it upstairs so we can check it out together? I never got an answer. So I wrote another letter. Dear sir, there are no heroes, no villains, no good guys, no bad guys. The world's more complicated than that. Come on upstairs where we can open a couple of beers and talk it all out. Again, no answer. So this time I wrote, Dear sir, I've been thinking too much of my own problems, too little of yours. Yours can't be a happy task, reading another man's mail. It's dull, it's an imaginative. It's a job. And let's not mince words for a hack. Yet I wonder, can this be the way you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a hack? As the office slob? Have you ever wondered why they stuck you with this particular job instead of others who have less seniority? That letter never got delivered to me at all. So I wrote again. Dear friend, just a note to advice. You may retain my letters as long as you deem fit. Study them, reread them, think them out. Who back at the home office is out to get you? Who at this very moment is sitting at your own desk reading your mail? I don't say this to be cruel, but because I'm the only one left you can trust. Still no answer. Interestingly enough, next day, a man did show up at my door, claiming that he was from the telephone company to repair my telephone, although no complaint has been sent or written. Shaky hands, bloodshot eyes, and as he dismembered my telephone, he said, look, what nobody understands is that everybody's got his job to do. I got my job. In this case, it's preparing telephones. I like it or I don't like it, but it is my job. If I had another job, say, with the FBI or someplace putting in on a wire tab, for example, or maybe even reading another guy's mail, like it or not, it would be my job. So does anybody got the right to destroy a man for doing his job? I wrote one more letter expressing my deep satisfaction that we had at least made contact and informing him that the next time he come, say to read the meter, that actually had valuable information. Photostats, recordings, names, dates, about the conspiracy against him. Now that letter showed up a week after I mailed it. It was torn in half and then clumsily improperly glued back together. 
Interestingly, in the margin on the bottom, in large shaky letters, there's a word written saying, please.